Welcome to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where we feature top leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry with your host, Drew Hendricks. Now, let's get started with the show. Drew Thomas Hendricks here. I'm the host of the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where I talk with leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry. Past guests of Legends Behind the Craft include Guillaume Fraub of Close Celine, Jason Bouchon of Bouchon Vintage Wine Company, and Daniel Dow of Dow Vineyards. If you haven't listened to these yet, be sure to check them out and subscribe. Today's episode is sponsored by Barrels Ahead. At Barrels Ahead, we work with you to implement a one-of-a-kind marketing strategy, one that highlights your authenticity, tells your story, and connects you with your ideal customers. In short, we help wineries and craft beverage producers unlock their story to unleash their revenue. Go to BarrelsAhead.com today to learn more. Today, we have a really special show. We're taking a deep dive into the Kirchhoff family wines. Now, they're located just south of Clarksburg, California, in the Sacramento River Delta. We talk a lot about this show about small family run wineries, but usually only have one or two of the members. Today we got a whole group, and we're going to they're going to help us paint a picture about what it really means to run a small winery, its origin, the teamwork it takes, and their vision for growth. Now we got a lot of people on the show, so I'm going to let everyone kind of t- take a second to introduce themselves. Why don't we begin with you, Emma? Wonderful, thank you. Hi, I'm Emma Kirkoff. Um, I am the youngest Kirkoff sibling. Um, kind of do everything gal. <laughs> I've, I've spent time in our tasting room as well as um, this last year. I was our harvest intern um, working alongside Casey um, and Sean um, and I've grown up in the vineyards so um, it's a kind of happy place for me. Excellent. I'm excited to hear your insight. And Lisa, you're next up on my screen. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm married to Casey and um, I've kind of watch this family grow from um, vineyards to winemakers. And it's been really fun, a part of the process. Like Emma said, we kind of all take part in in everything. So whether that's helping in the cellar, helping in the vineyards, helping in the tasting room, um, I really got to have a hand in helping the wine club grow and getting connected with our customers. Oh, cool. And Casey, you're, and you're mayor to Casey, sitting right next to him right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm the uh, Casey, the middle child, uh, and kind of acting uh, everything for the company. I'm the, our full-time uh, winemaker on site, and as well as uh, manage our wine club and the tasting room as well. Sounds very good. Now we're going to move to the to the parents, the the, the originators, Nancy. <laughs> I, I'm Nancy Kirkoff. Uh, affectionately known as Mama K when I work in the tasting room. <laughs> um, I am the mama, and um, my my uh, job description has changed through the course of the years. Um, <clears throat> luckily, now I get to be the grandma, and uh, the kids do all the work. But at one, t- I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, uh, helped Clayton with his very first batch of wine uh, in the garage. Uh, from there. And to this point where um, we are today. So, yeah. Fantastic. Craig? I'm Craig Kirkhoff. Um, I'm the, the father of most of this bunch. <laughs> or um, I am the grape grower of the, of the family, I guess. Um, I, I run the vineyards um, and... Uh, Try and produce grapes that these guys can make into a, into an excellent wine. Um, I like everyone else has just pointed out. I do most everything, anything needed. So um, it can be forklift driver to to tasting room to anything, but um, kind of kind of a um, jack of all trades, I guess. Sounds like that that is so necessary in a family wine. <laughs> you just you have to be able to do everything. And that leads us to Clayton. Clayton. Introduce yourself. What do you do? I'm Clayton Kershaw. I'm the oldest son of the family and um, essentially consult on the winemaking work with my brother on the wines and um, yeah, kind of help make sure that we're, we're producing really great wine. Very good. Very good. So I guess starting off, this first question goes to Craig. 
Craig, how did this winery get its start? Um, I, our story, our story starts uh, in the mid '80s. Um, Nancy and I, I, I grew up on a on a cattle and uh, cattle corn and soybean ranch in Nebraska, and um, I met Nancy while vacationing in California, and so our dream was at some time or another to to uh, to, of course, farm in Nebraska, but then also to um, to try our hand in, in California. So um, when the opportunity opportunity came up to um, to uh, learn grape growing in the California Delta, we we um, jumped on board and, and um, put everything in a cattle trailer and moved out to, moved out to Clarksburg, <laughs> California, um, for a couple of years, and um, we moved back to Nebraska for almost ten years, and then uh, in the late nineties we we moved out here on a permanent basis and uh, um, worked at, worked in the vineyards, uh, learned the trade, and uh, we're fortunate enough to purchase um, a couple uh, couple vineyards and a home out here in the Delta. So, um, so our kids were always in tow wherever we you know wherever we went. Come on, kids, hop in, and we're gonna go. We're we're gonna go try something different, and uh, maybe that's where where they've all gotten this uh, this. Uh, adventurous uh ideals of uh let's try something let's try something as a family so um, oh, D- dig in roll up your sleeves what um what drew you to grape growing taking the leap from cattle and soybeans um actually uh i, I had i had made a pledge to, my, to, to nancy that we would uh that we would uh um try california for a while and she found it she found a a placement here in California to to work in the vineyard so um so we, we jumped on we jumped on board with that and and uh um and like I say we were very very fortunate to have some very good instructors and and uh, and help along the way and uh um allowed us to to start our own, our own vineyard so um I, and what about I guess Clarks, Clarksburg area what about what why Clarksburg versus all the other areas in California. That was who was offering yeah. the job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In the eighties, that was who needed help. I always help. wonder how people wind up in certain places. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and that's really good question because Craig's um, uh, comfort level was very. Um, <clears throat> complete here in Clarksburg because Clarksburg's a very small community. People mm-hmm. wave on the roads, two lane roads. So a little Nebraska boy, it, he made the transition to California pretty easily to this area. Whereas if he'd been, he wouldn't have gone to San Francisco. He wouldn't have gone to LA where I grew up. You know, he, oh, sure. the Clarksburg was right up in, and uh, uh, right up our alley. And, and you asked why, how we transitioned from corn to grapes. Um, mm-hmm. Well, that was the market, you know, at the time that we, we came back to California in the late nineties, like Craig said, uh, we were still growing corn and tomatoes and so forth on the Delta. Um, mm-hmm. But farming is farming and you, you need to produce what people are buying, <laughs> sure. you know? Uh, so, uh, and as it turns out, uh, Clarksburg, the has just developed as this wine growing uh, region the ABA has just proved itself over and over again to to grow grow a uh, fantastic fruit so yeah. not only do people want it it um well they want it because it's great <laughs> so yeah. so how would you describe the Clarksburg ABA and what makes it unique I, first of all, the, first of all, the soil, the soils in Clarksburg are, are some of the some of the best you'll find in the world. They're just uh, alluvial, um, alluvial soils. You can grow, you know, so many different so many different products here that uh, um, that are um, kind of kind of unique to the area that that uh, can be grown here. But um, Clarksburg, Clarksburg, uh, we always talk about the uh, the nice Delta breezes. That, you know, it's going to be could be a hundred degrees today, but but five o'clock the delta breeze kicks in and it cools us down and it's kind of it makes for it makes for a really mild place to, to grow some uh, some some excellent grapes so. <laughs> yeah and, and 15 minutes or 20 minutes out of sacramento as soon as you cross the bridge you know how we all have uh temperature gauges in our our cars and our dashboards now 
immediately drops five degrees as soon as you cross the river, you know, out of, out of the heat oh. of the city and on into the country. Uh, it's a, just a different climate. <laughs> oh, that must feel so good. I don't want to um, at, at, throw one into the kids. And what what, are, what was it like growing up on the vineyard? This was before you were making wine. We were just kind of growing grapes. Maybe right. um, Casey or Clayton or Emma, t- tell me about this growing up on in Clarksburg. Well, I, I'll speak to that. I, I, both Clayton and I were, were older and, and um, I, both of us couldn't wait to get out, I guess, from a small town. <laughs> Uh, so we both were excited to go off to college um, and Clayton studied business. I studied design and didn't think that we would end up here another 10 years down the road. But, um, you know, it's really, it's just a, it's just a gorgeous place to, to live. Um, and uh, like mom mentioned, the people mm-hmm. uh, are great out here. So that kind of, um, drew us back into agriculture and then uh, obviously um, doing a uh, business of, of our own um, mm-hmm. that which um, dad was, you know, familiar with growing grapes and um, how to do that. And then Clayton can speak to how he got into to wine, but he, he started becoming, started making wine um, and uh, that really kind of confluence of, of, well, we've got a winemaker in the family, we've got grapes, let's, mm-hmm. let's do a project. So that's, that's how this whole project came, came about. Um, yeah. I don't know. Clayton, what, what brought you into wine? The lifestyle, you know, wine combines um, both a little bit of a rural lifestyle and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it pairs food and, and, and enjoyment and, and life all, all together. And so it was, um, pretty pretty quickly after I graduated from college, realized that that was um, that there was something special, and that that uh, so I moved, moved back and um, yeah, just kind of became a sponge and just read a lot, and, uh, learned as much as I could, and uh, that brought me to Napa, and, and ultimately the possibility for us to make our wines. The way that I worked at allowed us to uh, at some point allowed us to produce some wines uh, in their facility and. Um, that's kind of when it sort of mm. take off as a, as a business, I guess. Yeah. I'm always, always curious to learn the stories on what people, the, especially with the children, the way they leave and then come back and what draws them back. As far as you, Emma, um, tell me about Clarksburg and your, your experience in joining the winery. Absolutely. Um, I, I was fortunate to spend most of my childhood and young adulthood, um, on our home ranch um, that we, you know, take a lot of pride in um, and get to really watch it grow. It did mean there were Saturday mornings after <laughs> a week of, of all the activities in high school, uh, waking up at five or 6 a.m. and dragging a friend of mine out with me to the vineyard. Um, so it was kind of a different, <laughs> a different way to grow up. Um, but Clarksburg especially is such a wonderful community that's geared towards this kind of lifestyle. Um, there's a wonderful FFA chapter, Future Farmers of America at Delta High School um, that helped me kind of integrate my my home, <laughs> my home farm life and my, my school life as well um, and kind of cultivate a love for um, agriculture. Um, and I, and I see that a lot in a lot of my classmates and a lot of the people who, um, leave the, leave the area for a little bit and then come back. I have a lot of friends who right now are kind of moving back home or, um, starting to take an interest in their family businesses. So it's a really interesting and special culture out in Clarksburg. It does sound really special, especially the fact that you refer to as a ranch and the farm and, um, pretty much all of the, in the agriculture at its source oftentimes we're talking to wineries and it's really just kind of about the wine and not really about, I mean, there's the vineyard, vineyard talk, but it doesn't go beyond to greater agriculture. Um, I want to spend a second about wine. And we kind of talked about, you had a vineyard, might as well make wine, but I always like to ask this question. I'm going to ask Nancy this. Um, why wine? What excites you about wine? Okay. <laughs> well, again, like you said, we've, we've already touched on the fact that we were growing grapes 
Um, but um, the younger generation of uh, in our family, um, it was the inspiration to go to the step of making wine. For one thing, mm-hmm. they've traveled the world, both of the boys, and actually Emma is currently traveling the world, um, and they and they have an appreciation for wine, wine and food, et cetera, et cetera. And then here's dad sitting at home with, you know, so many acres of Chardonnay just uh, selling it. So what, yeah. what are we going to do? Um, and uh, wine in this region, again, promoting Clarksburg, but it is just, it. Uh, the grapes produce good wine. If mm-hmm. the vintner can produce it, you know, a lot of grapes went out of our district before, but then this younger generation, Clayton and Casey have come mm-hmm. home again with the world skills and uh, knowledge of wine to, uh, to create, create that product and, and to do it. And um, so kind of a no brainer. You got the fruits, you got the, you got the talent to make it into wine. It's a perfect entrepreneurial medium for that to fuel the passion. Yeah. Oh, and passion is a big part of it. Yeah. I, I I have to say, wine is a no-brainer for for uh, when we started. Clayton is a, a natural winemaker, and he and through his tutelage, Casey has followed in his footsteps. And I'm very, you know, I can't. I'm Mama K. I'm very proud of these boys. Um, because they make just excellent wine. It's just good. <laughs> I was saying, I, I got into wine kind of seeing it through Clayton's eyes, who um, has, has really brought a, a passion to winemaking. Um, and so I get to see him uh, uh, basically being able to, what, what he's done with his winemaking style and, and what we've implemented is really showcasing a, a, a certain place in a certain time and that's what's to me it's so special about wine and vintages of wine is because it's a it's a, it's a snapshot of, of, of a year you only get to make one product you get to one chance to, to put it in into the tank and if it goes bad then you don't get to put it in the bottle if it goes good you get to put it in the bottle and share it with people so um I really like that aspect of it. Um, and really it just showcases our, our land. We that's, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later is of, of maybe, um, our ethos of, of we're trying to showcase the, the, the land and, and, and really just kind of let the grapes speak for themselves. So, you know, we really stand behind our, our product and, and what we're doing here because we're, 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 basically trying to be stewards of the land and share that land with as many people as possible. I love that. The snapshot in time that it's, and it's been called a bottled memory. And it's one of those things that you get to experience and you get to take that um, evolution as it kind of matures and see that expression, that snapshot grow with you. Emma, you're, I think you're in Spain right now. Yes, that's correct. Where are you in Spain? I, so I live in a small town. It's actually very similar to Clarksburg um, in how it feels, Um, but it's called Titaguas. Um, It's an hour away from Valencia. Um, Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm out here, I'm out here teaching English. Are you? Okay. So your experience of wine and vineyards in Spain, how, how, compare that with your experience in Clarksburg. (laughs) It's, (laughs) It's a little different. It's it's interesting to see um, because this particular area um, grows a lot of albarino. Um, uh-huh. And so being able to kind of compare that to the process we go through with our, our white wines, since we do create a lot of Spanish varietals, um, it's, it's very interesting to get to kind of compare that. Um, and it's, you know, in abundance here. It's a very, um, a very... Uh, not wine centric culture, but it's, they're, they're very interested in um, their wines and they're very proud of it here as well <laughs> in my, in my town. Um, and actually part of a, a tiny part of the inspiration for what got me out here was Clayton um, because he actually had interned 
um, in Spain studying winemaking. So his oh. experience would be a little more hands-on than my own um, with trying some Spanish varietals. But the, the culture, I mean, it's, it's great to see the comparison of culture. And I do think I spent a lot of time um, buying, well, was a wine buyer in Spain. And I do really appreciate the, just the agriculture and the family um, run wineries there as well. Absolutely. It's awesome to see the cooperatives and, and how involved, um, even on a community, a communal level, um, how they all are involved in their winemaking out here. Oh, yeah. Lisa, we haven't heard from you in a little bit. Um, why wine? Lisa had to step off for just a second. Oh, that's why we haven't heard from her. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a day job. I thought she might have disappeared into the vineyard. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Casey, well, I have what you know what there's a perfect transition to what sets Kirchhoff wines apart from you know the multitude of other wineries out there in California. Um, so I think uh, I think what we're doing out here is is kind of more similar to 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 what you you'd find in Spain in these old world wineries. Um, we take uh, an old world approach to our winemaking and we do things uh, the way that, that we want to, to see our wines turn out. We, we take the extra step on, and if that means, um, you know, using our hands more than using machines uh, or uh, we, we do native yeast in our, in our cellar, which is not an easy way of fermenting grapes. Uh, we basically don't add yeast at all. Uh, so mm. it, it ferments on its own. Um, it picks up, it, it's, it's, it's a tough way to, to, to produce wine somewhat because it's less controlled, but mm. what we, what really sets us apart is that we've really, we focus on quality from the, from the day one. Um, when we, and and since we're a family winery we get to we get to you know start in the vineyards we get to um start by um we grow organically in the vineyards we don't use any pesticides um or roundup in our in our vineyards um so you know sustainability we, is very key to to what we do um and you've got a full, full farm like i i heard you just have a new, recent um some new additions to the new additions to the farm yeah that's part of part of what helps us not use pesticides is we we recently integrated some sheep uh into the vineyards we found that they eat about as many grapes as they eat uh weeds but um I was so we, wondering about that. yeah we have to pull them um we have to pen them up for uh the middle part of the growing year um but during the winter, certainly they, they do a great job and, and get out there and, and do our weeding for us and also help fertilize uh, everywhere they go. So that's one way we're doing uh, sustainability. Um, we also, we also, um, um, are non-certified organic, but you know, we, we use mechanical, uh, uh, weed control as well. And, um, and that, that, aspect of, of sustainability it starts in the vineyards but it also extends into our winery we um we utilize solar panels on our winery to power our winery we oh, wow. we um don't use additives in our in our wines which Clayton will get into a little bit but um uh, basically we're just we're trying to be light on the land and, and create you know a, a better uh place than, than what we've done it so um nancy has looked into uh uh, or has planted some some hedgerows for us, which will help the the, the native insects, um, uh, beneficial insects. Um, and yeah, just we're, we're constantly looking for ways to to better grow excellent, not only excellent grapes, but um, an excellent environment um, on our land. Yeah, Clayton, I was um, building off what Casey said about using just native yeast. Talk to me about the the benefits and challenges of working exclusively with the materials that are in your vineyard. Yeah. I mean, I get, uh, I, I guess the, there's good and bad that comes with being, um, 
kind of idealistic with our wines and, and the way we both grow the grapes and make the wines. And so, um, the, the way we grow the grapes is, and, and dad has molded this to the way we've decided to make our wines, which is kind of low impact. And so, um, you know, the dry farming we've talked about a little bit and the, or growing organically and these things are difficult things to stick to. And, but we, have to believe that they result in a in a, a cleaner more uh, succinct um version of the wine that that come from that land so um but the, the wine making is basically as simple as it can be which is to add as little as possible and that's kind of the a, a kind of a core um part of what i would call minimalist or natural wine making which is just to um, to not correct problems, but, uh, just but basically be uh, preventative. And so the, the difficulty is that we off, we, we often, we have to allow wines to ferment the way they will. And we try to kind of coax them along with temperature and, uh, things like that. But, um, we also have to be, um, pretty, I guess I'd say judgmental. We, we get, to, we have to be pretty picky about what wines we put to bottle and how we blend and, and what we choose to put into any given wine, because, um, with fewer corrective measures, we, um, we, uh, you know, often have, um, wines that just, that aren't, aren't up to the quality. So, uh, it's a little bit of, of a, a, a double edged sword where we, we have to stick to these, um, these ideals, uh, to present wines that we think are the truest expression. Um, and, but, you know, ultimately we have, I think I'd say a bigger um, margin that doesn't make it to model because of that, because we have to be a little bit um, more uh, rigorous in our, in our blending. I like the, I like that rather than being a, your creator or custodian, but over and above all, you allow the town, the vineyard to express itself. And your biggest job is editing, figuring out what doesn't fit that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah and that and that's you know i mean yeah. editing's a tough job editors definitely earn their keep in a in a good movie or you know and and that's uh yeah so blending is a big thing for us and and um you know it it informs what we're doing right or wrong both in the winery and in the vineyard and um you know we make adjustments as we go along but uh um you're, when you're really limited by, truly limited by what you you get, you have to be a little bit more mindful of it. And so, yeah, that's kind of the, what, what 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 we kind of try to stick to for our wine making is is just kind of well, allowing it to follow uh, what we all the energy we put into into the vineyards. Yeah, great expression is it, now as you've kind of crafting your vision and um, editing things and what 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 is the Kirchhoff in winery expressing <laughs> how would you describe your wines <laughs> so yeah i think um unfortunately gabby my wife isn't able to join this call she would be probably a, a better uh, advocate and and a, uh, she's a great taster in her own right she can and really is really uh, good able to vocalize things but uh i guess i'd say in general the the wines um tends to be i would say especially the whites are on the leaner side that we want them to be um to have a solid amount of acid that lets them stand up and pair with food and be um you know wines that of stature i guess i'd say or that ones that have some uh some good structure they also that being said that the, the native yeast ferments allow them to kind of have a richness through them even though they are what i would say leaner and, and more acid driven wines so um, you know, any winemakers aiming for balance, any, any wine grower, anybody growing grapes is looking for balanced vines and, and, uh, and then ultimately balanced wines as a result of that. And so I think, um, our wines are, I guess I would say generally, um, balanced out maybe a little bit less uh, alcohol or richness than, than, than some wines out there. Our Chardonnay gets into, um, it, it does bring in a kind of a richer element to the whites, uh, which we think is, is, a, is, a, is a good balance for that wine. Um, growing Chardonnay in Clarksburg, it can often have some tropical notes and, and some, some more exotic flavors. And so having some richness to go along with that, we find is really uh, beneficial. But the wines are all 
um, neutral barrel fermented and aged for the most part. So you're not getting a lot of oak impact. It's really um, mm-hmm. fruit driven. Uh, and I'd say again, a little bit of mineral dr- minerality based on the as- acidity in the wines is kind of a um, house style. Um, and uh, then we get into reds, which we do some, um, I think a lot of the reds uh, are based on what blends we can accomplish by utilizing grapes that grow really well. Um, we have, you know, some stan- standard uh, French and Spanish varieties that kind of make the base of some of our blends with Cabernet and, and Tempranillo is really a, a standout for us. And then we have some uh, blenders that bring us different aspects that we get to use in, in blends like the Red Table Blend and the Home Ranch Red, uh, each are kind of individual uh, blends. So we get to make some varietal wines and then um, we get to utilize some of some smaller varieties that we have in really small quantities as, uh, as blenders as well. So kind of a little bit about the, the red pro- program that we have, I guess. You mentioned the varietals and I want to ask Craig from the time you planted your the first vines or started uh, curating the vines, how has the vineyard makeup evolved over the years? Um, <clears throat> that's, that's interesting. I, I started growing production Chardonnay and, uh, mm-hmm. um, for, for several different, several different sources, always, you know, commercial Chardonnay and, and, um, um, once we started playing with the, playing with the idea that we were going to, that we, that we had, had a product that we could, could use, um, actually all, you know, all of our children decided that, Hey, we, we would like to be involved and, and, um, have, have some input into it. So along with input, they also put their, their own money into the first, uh, mm-hmm. the first three acres of, of vines. So, um, I, I own the ground, but they own the vines on, on the ground. And, and, um, so, um, uh, we we just decided we decided we were going to experiment with several different several different things and see which one worked and so um you know varieties wise we we, like clayton said we have a we have a a fair amount of tempranillo and grenache and cab and then we dropped to some smaller some smaller acreages of petite syrah and movedra uh, graciano and barbera and um and then we also moved to the whites, and we and we incorporated the, uh, the Chardonnay, of course. But um, at the same time, we wanted to try try uh, several different white varietals. So we we started with um, Merdejo and Albarino and uh, and Chenin Blanc, which um, was, we were kind of happy to bring Chenin Blanc into the fold because Clarksburg was kind of was kind of built on Chenin Blanc. I mean, that was yeah. one of the. That was, the first writer that that really really got a, a foothold out of Clarksburg was was Shannon. So 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 you know it, um, um, and actually we you know we we tried to find the bridles. Um, Clayton having spent some time in Spain, we we looked for bridles that uh, that he was familiar with from Spain, and and we really feel like we have a um, a pretty uh, similar climate to um, to. Uh, mm-hmm to an area of Spain that he was at. So we, you know, we focused on the Tempranillo and the Albarino. So, um, uh, that's, that's, um, it, it was always, it was, as we said, it was an experiment. Let's see what will work and what will work. And we really haven't found anything that doesn't work yet. <laughs> so. Family effort to yep. put the vineyards like that. Lisa, I got, I got to bring you into this discussion while I have you here. What's what's it like joining the Kirchhoff family and being part of this vineyard? Oh, you're gonna record that answer? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Um, I think uh, kind of almost um, parallel to Craig and his comfort of Midwest to to Clarksburg. um, I saw a lot of familiarity in this family and mine. They're they're a larger family. Um, but they took me under their wing as soon as Casey started bringing me around. Um, and again, I think kind of that I also have a Midwestern background. Um, so their worth ethic and the hospitality, um, in both this family and in Clarksburg was, um, really drew me in. Um, and then also again, to kind of 
be a part of um, watching them grow and, and being a part of it. You know, I remember really early coming up to visit and Kate, Nancy would pull me in and say, we're having this discussion, come be a part of it. And, um, and so kind of hearing, you know, the conversations and hearing everybody's opinions. And um, I very quickly offered mine, maybe that was wanted or not. <laughs> um, I was never, never shy to, uh, to jump in there. Um, they may regret that now, but um <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been great to be to be a part of it and see them grow into this as well as grow in the community and um, kind of continue to draw attention to the ABA. Um, and it's it's really inspiring um, to be a part of something that you're proud of. You know, I'm proud of this family and proud of the wines that we make. Um, I'm not a big wine drinker. I don't know if we covered this already, but. Casey and I tried to start a brewery and we got shut down real fast. So, um, you know, I, I didn't drink a lot of wine, but I like our wine and not maybe it's because I've helped pick the grapes or stomp the grapes or sell the tasting room. But it's, um, you know, when somebody says, what do you want for mother's day? I'm like a bottle of rosé, please. Like, so I think it's, um, it's something that I enjoy. And again, that family orientation of um, wanting to just all be together and do something that we're all proud of that we can put our name on. Um, and we really put a lot of effort to. Um, I don't know, but... Yeah, I don't know if you can see. Well, when she disappears, this is our home yeah. ranch behind us. <laughs> um, <laughs> on, on the video. It, you know, Lisa helped us. We hand planted this vineyard um, back in 2010. Yeah, I don't know how to come back or go away. <laughs> she sometimes <laughs> disappears into the vineyard. Uh, um, <laughs> we hand planted it and um, drove stakes by hand. And I remember that that when it wasn't it wasn't cool that day that we, you know, and and we all we all went out there. And I think that's how Lisa's fit in this family nicely is that she's not afraid to uh, roll up her sleeves and. And, and do the work. We're we're a small operation. We have to do things, everything that that is required of us um, in order to to produce this product. So um, that's why you see all this on on screen because we've all just had a, a big uh, part in, in getting it to where it is today. Casey, can I piggyback on that because I wanted to correct Lisa. She said she's enjoyed watching them grow. She's enjoyed watching us grow and been such an integral part of that growth, has brought so much to the table and so much to uh, the Kirkhoff wine brand that, that we didn't, didn't have the time to do. And she's, like Casey said, from, from every aspect, but a lot of things that none of us had any skills in. Lisa has brought them in with, uh, with the tasting room and with the... Um, um, what do you call it, uh, marketing and, and events and all these things that uh, we're not, we weren't capable of doing and she has done. So she's not watching from afar, believe me, she's watching from inside the circle. So what I wanted to say. Oh, I, I love how, this is such a special episode to see a true family all just combining and talking about what it's like to run a vineyard. It's here one one side and they say oh it's a group effort it's really fun to actually have the whole group here well not the whole group but as many people well, that can you're missing yeah. going. You to tell you the night yeah. that was a group effort <laughs> emma what were you gonna say i was just gonna add um yeah we are missing gabby as well um and it's been really cool to watch her help us grow in another sector as well that we didn't have any experience in before. Gabby um, works in the glass industry. And so talk about, you know, Clayton finding this like missing puzzle piece. It's, it's just, it's been really <laughs> cool to see her literally fit um, into our family as well as into the family business. Um, so, so quickly and so well. <laughs> yeah. The, the glass industry is that's, it's being here in 2022 with supply chain glass industry is a, Big it's, topic of conversation. It's a tough one. I make the joke often that I the glass glass is so bad I married my rep. <laughs> <laughs> but, and we actually glass is so bad that Gabby brought Lisa into the glass industry. <laughs> also working at, um, for Saxco, a, a company that's big in the, in both glass and and aluminum and packaging and uh, and 
um, yeah, they've both been very, very successful in, in working for them. And it's, but it's, it is a, a, a nice thing that kind of complements um, what we do. It definitely makes it, um, we understand a little bit of, um, about what goes into packaging at least and can, it makes us, I think, a little bit more responsive, specifically for small producers. You know, um, large yeah. producers have the ability to batch and buy big, big uh, lots at once. And so to have um, some insider insight into that has made us um, a little bit more uh, limber as a company, I guess. Oh, man, for sure. For sure. You don't have a barrel maker h- h- hidden behind the <laughs> anymore, do you? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, that's the grandkids. <laughs> there we go. Hey, I, I still have to find somebody, you guys. So I, I got this. <laughs> add, it, add it to the checklist, Emma. I'm sure there's some girl makers there in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple. We can, we'll set you up, Emma. <laughs> this, is, this is family by committee. We, we, we're always looking for, 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 for friends and spouses to come in because we always need the help. <laughs> Might as well make an application at this point. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Has, has to pass mustard with your brothers. So yeah. <laughs> good luck. So man, I, so what's what's it like visiting Kirch? I'm sure everyone now listening is dying to visit. Emma, tell tell me about what the what the experience is like visiting the tasting room or visiting the. Well, <laughs> How could you not want to hang out with a, a group of, of <laughs> like like Kirkhoff? Um, <laughs> I love our tasting room. I love being in our tasting room. I miss our tasting room staff every day. I text them all the time. Um, our tasting room is a really special place. It's in a in a in a location called the Old Sugar Mill. Yeah. Um, and it is quite literally an old sugar mill. I think it was built in. 1934 and it's it's just this really interesting rustic brick building with gorgeous outdoor space um in the springtime it's absolutely lovely to get a glass of wine and go sit outside on the lawn and watch you know children play um but our tasting room is is really special um i think i think it's a very welcoming environment. Like when I, when I go wine tasting, I'm looking for a location. I'm looking for a place that is, looks pretty, um, maybe that I can take cool pictures in, um, as well as how it feels when I'm walking up to the bar, you know, you don't want to be necessarily intimidated by, by who is greeting you. Um, and, the the tasting room staff that we have are so open and lovely and um it just i think it makes for a really great experience people come for our our staff and they they stay for the wines and they stay for the family um and our staff really is our family um i i definitely consider um tina and aaron and uh sheila and uh all of our all of our tasting room staff to be our our extended family for sure that sounds sounds like, sounds fantastic. And how many wineries are in that old sugar mill tasting facility? 14, 13, 14. Four. <laughs> yeah. That makes that kind of fun. You can, you can kind of get around and kind of sample sample the variety from the region. Yep. It helps Absolutely. reinforce that community. Talking about visiting in the tasting room, you guys just came off one of your big events which i'm so bummed i missed your wine and swine <laughs> talk to me about that well I'll, I'll i'll say my job was to cook was to cook the swine um 80 pounds 80 pounds uh we we've done this four or five six years i don't even know and we we shut we shut down for a couple of years but but um we do it in our front yard and oh, um <laughs> and uh we have a very nice grass area and and um um we it it started out as exclusive for club members only and and uh we had such a such a call for people that wanted to come that we expanded it out that uh, that um we let we let uh, other people come and and uh you know i think this year we're probably about 150 people came out and and um had live music and Lisa can speak to that. Yes, she, Lisa. Lisa that. runs our events here on the <laughs> property. Uh, well, as Craig kind of mentioned, oh, I'm disappearing again. I don't know whether to go forward or backward. Um, yeah, so we had about 150. 150-
150 people out this year. Um, it, again, kind of how everything else has grown. I think one of the very first times we had um, this event, uh, it was um, Jessica Malone up there on our deck with her little ukulele. And every year she's come out and she came out with two more people and then she came out with five people. And so um, the music gets bigger and bigger. Um, but we, we've kind of laughed that she's a little piece of that puzzle that really puts the perfect vibe into that day. Um, it's, it, some reason it always lands on the hottest day of the week. Um, but once the shade comes in, it's really nice. Um, again, it, it sounds modest when we say it's in the front yard, but it's actually out in Clarksburg. The yards are pretty large, so we're, we're able to fit a lot of people, but, um, the tasting room staff comes in and we get to, um, really go by and, and talk to people and we'll open up the house and, um, let them see the property. And, uh, this was something we had been doing a couple of years in a row, but, um, definitely during the pandemic years, we really opened up the house for, um, private vineyard tours also. So mm -hmm. in addition to the tasting room, um, people can book an opportunity to come out to the ranch and you can pet the sheep and get information about the, um, Pedro plants and go into the cellar and pick grapes off the vine, no matter what stage they are in the process. Um, if you come to harvest, we might let you see a punch down or do a punch down. Um, yeah. and <laughs> so you see the cellar and meet the family. Use their help. <laughs> Take all the help we can get. Um, but so I think if you, if they haven't, if somebody hasn't already come out to the tasting room or come out to the ranch for a private tour, um, sometimes these big events are really fun to, to just relax and enjoy and bring out your friends that haven't maybe experience with us or have a different type of experience. So if you're looking for a bigger event or a more intimate event, um, both those options are available um, through either the tasting room, a private tour or through um, events. That's fantastic. Now, Craig, did I hear that you, you cooked this one? You, you were the chef for this event? Um, I, I have a, a roaster box. It, it's called uh, uh, La Caja China and uh, it's, you put the pig inside and put charcoal over the over the top and cover the top and put charcoal on it. And four and a half hours later, you take it out and, and um, serve it. Oh, so, those are fantastic. I, I did have the opportunity to use one once. They're yeah, it, that, oh, oh, man. It, now, it's now I'm, it, I'm bummed on this yeah. stuff. <laughs> it was good. It was the best pig ever this year, I think. It must have gone fantastic with the temper neo. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was. For sure, and the grenache, and the grenache. <laughs> oh yeah. But I'm kind of jumping around here. But talking about visiting the visiting the winery, you were talking about petting the sheep. Now these aren't just any old sheep, from what I know. These are they're little ones. They're baby, baby dolls. Baby and you dolls. Had a, um, you had quite an experience about three weeks ago, I think. Um, <laughs> one was calving or birthing. Norman. We had, we had our first. Go ahead. <laughs> we had our first lambing session and uh with with we we got uh sheep on the property two years ago and and this is our first lambing uh this year and uh, i i read that there's about a five percent chance that you can have a breech baby come and sure enough on our first night we had two two ewes give birth and one of them was was breech oh. so we got to become uh veterinarians uh, very quickly and with google with, and youtube <laughs> yeah, yeah um those are Craig and, and lisa best. and i yeah. so one person was on What's youtube that? how do we fix this and the other person was actively fixing it and a couple people were supervising no they yeah, all three Craig, Craig right? and, <laughs> yeah Craig had, had delivered some sheet or some some uh Cats. cow in Nebraska. Uh, and so he was our, he was our mentor during this. Uh, um, and it was just quite a, quite a harrowing experience out at, at midnight underneath the stars and, uh, wasn't quite sure how things would end up. And, and sure enough, we, we delivered a, a breech baby, uh, about, about mid about 1230 in the morning and, uh, both, both mother and the, and the baby survived. And we we're pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, I wanted to bring that up because that just shows that whole family getting together just figuring out and watching the family grow larger with, with sheep. 
<laughs> Literally all hands on deck. <laughs> yeah. Well, not on deck. It's, it's amazing <laughs> what you can find at 12:30 in the morning on the internet when you need something really badly. You can, <laughs> you can look yeah. something up on the internet. So <laughs> no, that's that's so that's so fantastic. Um Lisa, I'm gonna shift with no segue. Talk to me about your labels and their art. Um, well, kind of to bring back, you kind of talked about like the expression of the wine and the expression of the grapes. Um, I think there's something about each one of us that brings to the table that there's this artisan um, and in, in different ways, whether that's in the vineyard or in the winemaking um, and a, a big tribute to the creativity and artists in our family is to Nancy with her photography background. Um, so all of our labels are in a layout of a Polaroid um, and each label has their own distinct um, image. Um, the majority of them are photographs. Some of them Nancy has taken, some of them Casey took, some of them I took, some of them um, we've had other people kind of contribute to them. But um, for the most part, they've all been taken by us. And the majority of them all feature a heritage oak tree that's on the property. So um, you'll kind of see different um, ways of looking at it and views of it as well as um, capturing the Delta itself or Clarksburg itself. Um, and then you can drink a bottle of wine and sit underneath that oak tree when you come out. Um, so again, you're kind of connecting with the property and with the family um, in that sense. Does that like, cover all of it? <laughs> I love it. So the family, you're lambing, you're cooking, you're making the wine, you're taking the pictures. <laughs> Here, <laughs> it's end to end, end to end DIY. What's the? Um, I love it. I love it. So, as far as that oak tree, is that in the is that in the front yard where the? Where it is, is that in? The, yeah. it's, a, it's a great, um, great logo on your on your label. Thank you. Yeah, that that uh, that's our home ranch. Uh, on on the home ranch red label, you can see a shot of the the, the, the ranch. And all of our reds are housed right right along. Um, it's kind of backs up to a levee. There, we're we're located on a slough, and um, uh, all of our reds are growing right there. And our our whites are about another five minutes south of of, of our location. Um, so it's definitely it's worth the drive out if anybody can can come out to do it. A, a, a ranch tour or uh, come to one of our events. It's uh, our little slice of heaven and, and we're just really happy to, to be able to be stewards of it and uh, share it. Well, that's fantastic. What, um, there's I like one photo I can think of that's not the tree. It's Craig's photo from China. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a reflection of some trees. Yes. Just not our tree. Yeah. Emma, are you going to send some Spain, some photos from Spain for the down to? Well, I'm going to have to. You know what? Listen, the the creativity in this family, I think, was spent by the time we got to Casey. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, photography has never really been my thing. Um, but maybe I can have my students do a competition to see who can draw the best tree and contribute somehow. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So as we're, as we're kind of wrapping down here, I'd like to everyone to kind of just go around and um, say one last thing that really, something that comes to mind, something you want the listeners to know about Kirkhoff Wines. Emma, starting with you. On the spot here. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm getting a little misty. I just looking at, looking at my family here. Um, Kirkhoff Family Wines is really special. Um, and I miss every, every single bit of us, uh, quite a lot while I'm here. I miss the home ranch. I miss, um, even as, as hard as being the harvest intern was this last, this last fall, I miss waking up and Casey texting me, do you want some coffee and him rolling in a little later. And I miss getting to have my nephews come out and, and give me a hug while I'm out, um, in the, in the vineyards. Um, and being a family business is so central to us and so central to who I am as a person now. 
Um, it's, it's just been wonderful to watch us grow. Um, and, you know, I'm really thankful for this opportunity to get to share this with a whole new, whole new crowd of people. Um, so I hope that <laughs> we're coming through how we, how we are as a family. I think, I think, um, each one of us brings something really special to the table. And I think we've been able to kind of show that here. So Lisa, Casey. Um, I would say the thing that comes most to mind is um, authenticity. Um, I think um, we work really hard in what we can do. And as you've heard time and time again, we're, we're hands in everything. Um, I think we do have a problem with asking for help. Leaning <laughs> on other people. Um, which we probably should do more, but, um, we may not be the newest, brightest, shiniest, most expensive. Um, but we're authentic. We're true to who we are. We're true to who we are as a family. Um, we're trying to really pay tribute to the land and the region, um, and highlight that. And so what you see is what you get. And, and I think that's why people not only fall in love with the bottle, but they fall in love, um, with the property and they fall in love with us. Um, and, we're not trying to sugarcoat anything or hide anything. I think, I think you can taste that in every glass that we are um, putting, putting everything we can into this. And um, whether you like it or not, we're having a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just, I'm uh, a big part of our ethos is, is, is trying to shine a light on this, this region, which has been, um, uh, it's a it's a tiny little you know wine region the AVA that could and we're trying to showcase the best quality that we can uh, and go out there every day and and improve and and make uh, that best uh, foot forward so that um, so that we can yeah showcase what what the land here has has to offer. Very good, Clayton. Yeah, I think uh, well they've. Heard- Oh, just to follow up kind of each person family. And then I think kind of authenticity and, um, you know, um, I, I kind of would add in that, that it's a, we, we probably, I think pride ourselves on it being a true product. You know, I think the authenticity is great, but we also, it's a, it's a true product. We can all kind of stand behind and, um, it, it, um, it delivers our family story and it, and it, it, um, it's something that, we really love um, sharing and having people be a part of, and it's meant to be accessible and enjoyable and, you know, not, you know, wine can be pretty fussy and, and, and um, we kind of, I, I really enjoy that I can share our wines with people and be really proud of, of them and, and um, know that um, it can be a wine that people can enjoy regularly and, and uh, be a part of their lives. And I think that's kind of what, I think is really important for us to have something that is true and and real both at the same time. Very well said. Nancy, Craig, it's all because of you. <laughs> it's hard to piggyback on that. The, the kids have said it, you know, we're very proud of, of what they've done um, because they've done it. You know, it's, uh, 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 I, I can't even tell all the working and, and all the things that Casey, who, who, who has the brunt of the day-to-day operation um, is just an incredible uh, Renaissance man and can do everything from, you know, designing this to, to making the wine. Clayton's skill at, at winemaking and his, and his uh, knowledge of wine. Emma's a joy of life and all this all these things, I, I don't, I can't, I shouldn't list them out individually, but it makes a, fam, a farm family so proud. Like Casey said earlier, the first thing they wanted to do out of high school was get, get out of town and go, go to the big city, but they're back. They're mm-hmm. back and they're making it better. And they're not making, they're only, they're making it better for all of us and for their own kids. So it's really, it's really cool. Well, I guess, yeah. Right. 
Anything else good? Well, <laughs> you know, to, what everybody, what follow. everyone is, has set has just kind of wrapped up here. I think, you know, starting out first with, with the community, we're, 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 we're proud of, we're proud of, of, of our, our kids and our family because we, we are community minded and, and, uh, um, we're all about Clarksburg. We're all about the area that we, that our kids have grown up and we're, we're grow, growing our, our grandkids. Um, and, and I just wanted to throw in because, because we started about six or seven years ago working on a project in Clarksburg, the high school. Um, we, we realized that there was a, that there was a real lack of vocational training in the biggest industry in the area. And that was, that was, that was vineyards. So, uh, <laughs> group of people got together and we, and we secured a couple acres of donated ground and, and, um, uh, people contributed money, vines, stakes, labor, everything. And, uh, um, we, we put in, uh, uh, a couple acres, one, an acre of Chenin Blanc and an acre of Cab Franc. And we sell it. We, the, the, the high school students and the junior high students have, have put the, have planted the grapes put the steel in the ground, put the straws in, put put the, the, they, yeah. do, they, they do everything. They, they everything except and, make the wine. Yeah. That would not be legal, but, but, uh, but um, it's a, it's a educational project that from get go to, to now producing wine. It's Craig's been a big part of, and, and um, it's really cool. Really cool deal. Well, that was, you know, and, and uh, last year was our first actual producing, uh, vintage uh, uh we bottled uh 20 cases of, of chenin blanc that we're that we're selling and it's all going into it's all going into a scholarship fund for the for the uh, graduating seniors that are going to anybody that wants to that is going to move on and, and uh, get into an ag-based uh ag-based studies so um so that that was a little bit about what we, what we like to do for the community and, and the other the other thing was oh, it was you know everybody's talked about family um probably every every farmer's dream to have to have his his kids uh come back and come back and work on the farm in in some you know some way or another for either for a harvester or, or full time and, and uh, um that's not that's not always easy you know um we uh there's things that you can say to an employee that you cannot say to your sons or your or your or your or your in-laws um <laughs> It's it's just a, a different dynamic, but um, we we still make we make it happen, and, and uh, you know some some day, some days we, we have disagreements, but we um, we all sit around the table that night and and have dinner and and um, come together as a family in the in the business end. So so um, that's that's that wraps our family up pretty pretty nice, I think. Yeah. Amazing. So. So good to so good to hear this story. So good to hear it, um, Casey. Where can people find out more about Kirchhoff Wines? Currently, we're we're mostly sold just at on online at our website kirchhoffwines.com, and in the tasting room at the Old Sugar Mill. We are uh, starting to expand out into a few retail locations, um, and so um, hopefully you'll see our our wines around town a little bit more as as time goes on, but. Uh, this spot is to come to the source. Yeah, well, there you go. If you're looking for a true expression with family wine, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast. We'll see you again next time, and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes. Thank you.